Dear all at Hill Park, God willing, I hope to be with you on my return from Dubai in November. Meanwhile, I pray you will be directed by the Lord in all matters in connection with church matters. I wrote to the Secretary of the Baptist Union in connection with Mike's recent circulation of Baptist Basics regarding the series written by Dr. Neil G. Wright, the former principal of Spurgeon's College, with a view to discuss certain issues he raised. In his document, I was informed by the Secretary that Mr. Wright was unavailable to meet or discuss matters. It wasn't clear as to why he was not available, so I've asked my email to be sent to him personally. As I'm not a church member, I realise I'm not privy to certain church matters, and so I may not be aware of matters that have been discussed privately as a church. My communications with others who are not church members, via email etc, is with the purpose of being transparent and making known my understanding and concerns. For this reason, I have included the email addresses as copy copy for those to whom I have written to, so as not to be as those who speak of things done in a corner. Acts 26, 25 to 28. Those to whom I wrote are family members and ministers of the gospel who have an interest in the cause of Christ. With reference to privacy, an incident occurred with Kevin when the matter of women preaching was mentioned and I stated to him that a woman is disqualified from being an elder, 1 Timothy 2.12, and he disagreed with me. So I asked him to read a book that I had written on the subject and to give me feedback. As this book related to the church at Warsash, I informed Brian Reeves, one of the elders at Warsash, at liberty to relate to Kevin what had happened at the church in 1999, should he meet him, as the matters that I wrote about involved them. When I informed Kevin that I had contacted Brian, informing him that I had given him permission to relate those things that took place, Kevin was taken back with surprise and said he would never divulge anything that we had discussed together. I was taken back by his surprise, as I was not used to doing things in secret based upon the maxim that if what he said is not in love and as a Christian, it should not be spoken about at all. Colossians 3.16, 1 Peter 4.5, Romans 8.9, Philippians 1.27 and I had no concern about Kevin making inquiries about what I had written. In connection with this subject and transparency, please take it from me you may freely speak and relate to anyone all that I write and publish by whatever means as I write as a Christian in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for his honour and with the interest and safety of all in my care according to the Gospel rule 1 Corinthians 14 40 2 Philippians 2 15 and generally, my communications are with a view to the spiritual safeguard of others, Ezekiel 33, 6, Philippians 4, 6 to 7, and not as a dumb dog, but me being about the master's business, Isaiah 56, 10 to 12. It is my view that we as Christians should be governed by the word of God and not allow our moral beliefs and practices to be governed by the moral standards set by a government of a nation. Acts 5, 27, 28. I speak in connection with church affairs, in particular about same-sex marriage and homosexuality. There is a move afoot to regulate what may be spoken about publicly and as a church, and a church be bound by the law not to discriminate as to those who can marry in a church building or join a church. In this period of my life, I have noticed much legislation about what can be done and what cannot be done, all in the interest of diversity, safety and equality, and religious people seem to bow down to the dictates of those in secular power. Our rule surely must be what says the word of God or not, are we allowed to do this or that? We should be governed by the spirit of Christ, as written in his word, submitting to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, 
1 Peter 2.13, in so far as it is consistent with the word, otherwise we become like the Galatians who were pushed from pillar to post and had fallen from grace. That is the doctrine of grace by those who wish them to be bound by the beggarly elements of the law of Moses, a reference to the world. This should be in all matters and not to be hogtied to an ungodly government seeking to bind men to ungodly practices, Matthew 5, 14 to 16. This fear of man has produced a politically correct culture that inhibits godliness, Romans 12, 2, and I believe we should rise above this, speaking truth openly, honestly, and above board, and not in a corner behind a person's back, Romans 1, 30. I pray and trust the church meeting at the end of the month will bear much fruit to the glory of God and the cause of the Lord Jesus Christ. Be strengthened with all might, according to his glorious power, unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness. 1 Colossians 11, David Clark.